Monster. Hey everybody, and welcome to another fun episode of The Hog's Die. You're all stuck in your house with nothing to do, so just listen to us. We could go on for five hours, and I mean, it'd be great, right? So, it's Alex as your host again. Uh, Steve and Jamal are with me, and we have a guest, a throwback. It's like when you get the, you know, old Super Bowl teams together. Uh, we have Robbie Duncan on the show again as our special guest. Hey, Robbie. We got to that, Robbie, back. as we used to. Yes. I don't, yes. Know, if, I don't know if I'm making noise, but I'm clapping. <laughs> I see it. I see it. I, yeah. I see it's like old times, man. We need to get yeah. you. We'll have to get you to do, like, you know, your, uh, your what's the, the TV show guy impression that you do? Oh. The cartoon. Uh, well, you can't do the Jay Gruden impression anymore because look, look, we're gone. we're ten we're ten seconds into the show. Give him, look, yeah. he's into these type of things. All right, Robbie's retired. Robbie's been knows. retired from shows, so <laughs> yeah. But Robbie knows what I'm talking about. The guy on your phone. Oh, uh, are you talking about Peter Griffin? No, the no, 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 no. The, he was he used to be your cell phone. You ring your your message on your cell phone. Oh, I did a couple of those. Oh, okay. One was, so one looked, was Hank Hill. Hank Hill, that was it. Yeah, Hank Hill. Bobby? Yeah, I yeah swear, there you are. I sell propane and propane accessories. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's Just from Steve's For those who don't Nickelodeon. realize, if you remember this, Robbie was the kicking net when we interviewed the kicking net. Oh, that was a classic time. bit. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, we did some weird bits. bits. <laughs> I, I mean, your Jay Gruden was always a classic. Uh Steve yep, only Robert did Kermit the Frog. It was bad. a whole. Th- this show was a yeah, mess back bang, then. Bang place. Yeah. We should have done one that was all Hank Hill and Kermit the Frog, just doing like <laughs> offensive line analysis or something. That would have been a weird one. Um, Jamal would have been like completely disinterested in any of that. We, we do know <laughs> that Kermit loved hogs, so you know. <laughs> That's right. All right, let's get into the actual show, um, Robbie. It is great to have you back on for an episode. Um, yeah. A lot of stuff happened this week, obviously. Um, we have some trades. We had some agents doing some nonsense. Uh, but let's start this out the old-fashioned way, Steve. We're going to start with your poll. Okay. Because uh, I think your poll leads nicely into everything that happened. Okay. Now, first of all, I didn't. this poll was Jamal's idea, and I didn't quite get it right for what he wanted. So, Jamal, just pretend that I did get it right. Um, and just go with it and <laughs> praise me anyway for this. Um, Steve so, did an excellent job on this poll. He did nothing wrong. He was <laughs> look. It was it was perfectly it was perfectly encapsulated in what I wanted to get across. Perfect. Thank you. That that's my that's my ego. I know. did not tell one lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the poll that we got, which is not what the poll that Jamal wanted. Which situation have the Redskins handled better this off season? Trent Williams, Quentin Dunbar. Both equally or neither, meaning they blew it on blew it on everything. So as we do always, and as Robbie remembers, we're gonna try to predict what the fans think about this poll and also what you think about it. So, but we'll we'll let Alex go first here to give Robbie a warm up. Sure. To help we sure. remember. So Alex, what do you think? Well, Robbie's the guest. He'll get to close, so right, he'll get a right. little. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say that the fans went with. The I guess the Dunbar trade being better because, you know, it happened and Trent Williams, everyone's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, and I personally, I think they've botched everything. So it was at least with those two trades. Like, I, I think okay. if you are happy with either of these situations, y- y- you're wrong. Just th- this is bad management 101. <laughs> Which I hate to say it. All right. Uh, Jamal, what do you think? Yeah, so um, I'm going to think that the fans said that they handled uh, Dunbar right. Um, But I personally think this is tough. Um, This is tough. I personally think that, uh, shoot, I don't even know if I could, I don't even know if I could give an answer on like how I feel, which one was more. Um, But what I can say is they rushed the Dunbar trade and at one point they blew the Trent Williams trade. Um, mm-hmm. However, Trent Williams, the, the tide is, the tide is turned, whatever it is, whatever the saying is, it, it changed with Trent Williams because now 
his side is the one that's blowing it. Um, so it's like it's kind of hard to really say which one is worse because at one point Trent Williams um, could have been gone for a second or a first, and we blew it. But now that they want to get out of Washington, they're all they're doing is <clears throat> making their situation much more worse on the Trent Williams side. Um, so I can't necessarily say that the Redskins handled handled it well, but I also can't say that they handled Dunbar um, Dunbar well either because they could have probably got more for him. But they rushed it because they just wanted to get him out of here. Okay. Robbie, opinions? Uh, what were the other options? Was it just the two? Yeah, Trent Williams, Quentin Dunbar, or they did both well or neither, meaning they, they've blown both situations. I think, personally, they blew the Dunbar situation. Um, I mean, apparently, reporters have said that the fifth-round pick they got back for Dunbar was – Better it was pretty good value, all things considered. But I don't know. You got a starting caliber corner, young. Yes, he has some injury problems, but I don't know. You should have probably tried to get something more out of it than just a fifth. So that's the one I'll say they mishandled. Um, the Trent Williams situation. This new regime has, in my opinion, handled it the best way they could. I mean, they they shouldn't just let Trent go for for peanuts and and let him have his cake and eat it too. I mean, it's they're trying to get the most value out of a trade for him as as they can, and Trent's the one that's not playing ball from all things that's being put out there. His his agent is has really just screwed him over with everything. Um, gave him the advice to hold out for the season. They made everything seem like it was about the medical staff and Bruce Allen. Redskins released Bruce Allen. They cut all and fire all this medical staff, bringing in all these well respected medical people, new staff. Ron Rivera is the new head coach and, you know, one of the most respected head coaches in the NFL, all to make you happy. And he still, oh, no, I just, you know, I, I just want a new change of scenery. It's not about, you know, I didn't want to put anybody under under uh, under fire for this, I, you know, not on my account, blah, blah, blah. You know, we did all this for you to make, make you happy, to bring you back, and now you're asking for a huge contract and you want out. I think Ron Rivera and, and the front office is doing the best they can. Um, and from all accounts, it looks like Trent Williams is the one that's preventing himself from, from moving on because of his contract uh, demands. Okay. Um, personally, I would have voted for Dunbar. Or, or, uh, no, I, I'm sorry. I, Dunbar's the one they messed up. So um, I would have voted, I suppose, for Trent uh, Williams. The fans agree with Alex. Uh, it's a very close vote, actually. Uh, one of the closest polls I think we've probably ever had. Uh, 28% voted for neither they blew it with both, and that was the winner. That's actually uh, a high percentage, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, well uh, usually usually they're pretty more one-sided. You know, usually yeah, yeah. the winning is up over 50. But this, I mean, the, the next one, three, you're going to see why I said that. Uh, number two was both equally, meaning they've handled both equally at 26%. Quentin Dunbar, 25%. Twenton Twent Williams, 22%. So the fans are pretty, uh, spread. yeah, pretty evenly spread about that. We didn't get a very many comments on this for some weird reason. I'll just read a couple here. Um, uh, Donnell Wilson, who is at Nell at Nell Ford, uh, says Dunbar. He started making noise, and now he's in Seattle. Uh, they're taking their sweet time on Trent Williams. Um, Mark, who is at Mountain Cowboy, Wyoming, says new regime, new rules, get on board or get out. I have no problem with anything they're doing. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you on. laughing at his name or his comment? No, uh, the comment. Uh, it's just, it's just funny. Like that's that is a. I'll, I'll let you go ahead. I was just saying that's just the makeup of a lot of fans now, which is it's not a problem. It's just funny hearing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ed Bowen, who is at GE Bowen 3, says Vince Taylor is now on a publicity campaign to try and convince a fan base that Trent is in the right. That alone says Redskins are doing things correctly with respect to Trent. And Vince Taylor, for those of you who don't know, is Trent Williams' agent. Uh, okay, that guy's cursing. I'm not going to say that one. Uh, oh, read one more because I haven't read Dave's comment in a while. Dave is a probably our most commenter. regular. Yeah. He says... Uh, I, I can only imagine how spiteful Bruce would have been this year with Trent. <laughs> Trent's agent has been the issue in all this from bad advice last year to making statements this year, which is killing Trent's value. Uh, Dunbar dug his own grave. And I'm sort of editing his comment. But those are the comments. It's a good, that's a good sample um, of it. Personally, like I said, um, 
I, I kind of agree with what Robbie said. You know, I think they they could have gotten more value out of Dunbar. I mean, he's young. He's a starter. Yeah. Fifth round, really. He's going to thrive in Seattle. He's going to yeah, thrive. Yeah, exactly. I, I, 100%. 100%. Mm-hmm. It, it, uh, that, the, we will have egg on our face in, in the press for that one. But I don't yeah. think Dunbar's that good. But, uh, I mean, I do think he's going to thrive in Seattle. And I think he certainly would have been worth like a third or a fourth round pick or equivalent value to me. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing that was getting me um, – so yeah, Dunbar. You know, it's just the situation out there and how they like their corners. Um, and he he's a he's a all right, that's that's even besides the point. But after hearing the the comments and actually hearing everybody talk, I thought about it. Uh, I kind of do lean to neither. They they kind of both blew it. I mean, they both they blew both situations. And the reason the reason why I kind of we already talked about Dunbar, but also when it comes to Trent too, um, there are multiple. Like that that whole situation, I think we're gonna get into the comments with the agent, right? Soon. Yeah, we're gonna um, get to that. Yeah. yeah. So so one of the things that, that kinda is it's just so it's is multi layered. Um and when you when you think about when you think about the opportunities that they had, uh what is it, March now? Um Right. When I guess I say like forty some days, forty five days, um there's opportunity on Ron's end to help mend the fences too. Now, that's not to say Trent Williams is a little sensitive, which he kind of comes across as. I don't know him, oh, but he he's kind of across as. It's yeah. very yes, yes, very sensitive. But on to the Redskins' extent, if you understand a situation that's going on, like when you take this job, you you know what happened with Trent Williams. Like he sat out the whole year when you when you at at the time of your presser, he was gone the whole year. He didn't play. Um, and you said you're going to take your time out to assess the, the situations and then you're going to start speaking with players. Ron treated Trent Williams like he was any other player on this roster. His situation was unique. He should have been priority. And the Redskins didn't give that opportunity to Trent Williams. Um, you could have spoke to him soon, sooner than waiting that 45-day period. Um, you could have you could have reached out to him. At the same time, Trent could have reached out to him. Um, that's one thing, too. But you had that opportunity where you didn't speak to anybody and you didn't speak to Trent Williams at all. Um, and that could have been a situation that could have been handled much more differently too on the Redskins aspect, even after he held out. So I'm only saying that to say things could have been handled a little bit better. And he could have possibly, he could have well have possibly changed his tune in terms of being more open to stand here. Even though at the end of the day, I do think he just wants to get out. Um, and I just feel like if that if that opportunity happened where he he spoke to Trent sooner, then maybe the both sides could have let their guards down a little bit more, and he would have been welcome to to at least entertaining offers from the Redskins. Well, Robbie, let's I want to get your opinion on something. Let's just get into this Trent stuff because you're the one here who's played big time college football, so I think you probably understand this more than most. And and uh, for those of you who are living under a rock, Vince Taylor, who's Trent's agent, gave an interview. Uh, with Grant and Danny on 106.7 on Thursday, yeah. a very good interview. Uh, it was a very long, it was 30 minutes. And in there, uh, Taylor disputed many of the things that had been out in the press, said that uh, you know Trent never demanded $20 million. He, he didn't say that. He said the contract would not stand in the way of a Trent Williams trade no, he when did, asked he about that $20 million point, dollar demand. Because they asked him about the $20 million. He did say, we've never asked for that, m- okay. that much. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and and it went kind of on and on and on. Um, but it was very – it was certainly Trent's side of it. So, But, Robbie, t- you know, I guess my question for you is how do coaches handle – how should they handle – um, big time players like this, because Trent isn't just some guy. Trent is a seven time Pro Bowler. He would have been in the Ring of Fame. He had an outside shot at a Hall of Fame. So, um, how do coaches handle at big time levels handle disputes? How should they handle disputes with star players? It's a good question. Uh, you know, I, it, I it's hard because you have to kind of walk this line where you don't want to coddle them because you're the head coach. You have the uh, you have the total authority of everything in regards to the team. They have to answer to you and report to you. So, you, you know, it, it's kind of a, a give and take and a mm-hmm. case by case basis, in, in my opinion. You know, with this kind of thing, um, with Trent, you know, if if it sounds like he's just playing hardball and, and doesn't even want to really um, come to the table and 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 actually, you know, talk talk shop, then 
you know, what, what else can you do? You know, if, if it's, cause what it sounded like to me from this whole point is that he just does not want to be here. All this stuff with Bruce Allen and the medical staff was a very good, uh, excuse yeah. on top of yep. wanting to, you know, yeah. he, he, he could play the victim with that. And then that all got changed when they fired him and released this medical staff. Um, I mean, in that way, they were doing everything to appease their high profile player. And then it's still not enough <laughs> because he doesn't want to be here. That, I mean, that's my perception. He, he, it's all this has just been a facade for him just flat out not wanting to be here. And uh, so, you know, I, I feel like in this situation, you, you don't coddle him and appease and play his uh, game at that point. You do what you got to do that what's best for the team. I think there is a larger point, and Jamal kind of touched on it in a way, and you have too now, Robbie. We all heard when Rivera came in, he said he wants people who are on board, which to me, that's all well and good, and I think every coach wants that. But my, my one issue, and I've I've seen this with Trent and Dunbar, it doesn't feel like there's any give from the coach to try and convince these guys to get on board to begin with. It, it, it seems like if you... And this is just my opinion. If a new boss comes into your company and he said, here's the way I'm doing things, and you have a problem, your boss still has an obligation to kind of sit down and get everyone on the same page one-on-one. That, that's just good management. And, and it doesn't seem like that happened. The 45-day thing irks me to no end. I, I know a coach has a lot on his plate, but you've been there a month. I feel like you should have met most of your big-name players, most of your starters by a month in. And the most important, the most important player who sat out a whole year because of a cancer scare. That's and that's that's where I'm getting at. Um, on at and we're talking about it on two sides, the Redskins side. You had thirty, you had so X amount of days to talk to this guy, mm-hmm. and you know the things that he's been through. You know that. So why are you why are you not addressing him sooner? That's, and that's that's the most important thing. Like, yeah. if you know this, if you know this guy is going through something, you need to reach out to him sooner and understand that. And you spoke to it. You spoke to it like perfectly. A person that's coming in on a job and knowing everything that you got on your plate, it still should be no excuse to like to to recognize there are certain things you have to bump up there on the list as in terms of priorities. See, well, this is why I wanted Robbie's input because I agree with you, Jamal, and like the mediator peacemaker in me says I would have sat down with him first and said, look, and you're the most important player here. Let's talk about it and let's arrive at a solution that's kind of mutually beneficial. But but I really wanted to get the football player's perspective on it because I get the feeling that Ron Rivera does not suffer fools at whatsoever, and he's very hard-nosed guy, and I just think he's not going to do that, period, dot, the end. It's my way or the highway, and that's it, and, and get out if you don't like it. And so that's why I really wanted your perspective, Robbie, because I think that's more of like a football coach mentality rather than like the manager at the bank mentality <laughs> and he's also got a military background as well they right. don't they don't suffer any you know uh they're very strict and, and it's it's you do what we say and, and that's that so that clearly shows in his how he's managing things yeah, yeah. now the other part of this is if that's the case why haven't they traded him and what vince taylor's position on the Grant Danny interview was that we've presented them, you know, multiple trades for both picks and players and the Redskins are being unreasonable. They've changed their minds right. and, and changed their stance and blah, blah, blah. I think, but the one question That's he so didn't, shallow. what well, is, yeah. and the one question that he didn't answer the, when uh, what Grant and Danny asked him specifically was, have you gotten a second round pick? And he went and we bobbed and weaved and didn't answer. Right. That so that tells me that he hasn't gotten the yeah. second round pick for him yet. Um, and so personally, I think I, I couldn't care less what Trent wants or thinks at this point. I think the Redskins really ought to hold out probably right before the draft. And that's going to be the peak value. You know, is is right then, right before the draft. So that's what I would do, and I don't blame him whatsoever for holding out for a second round pick. I mean, the man's he's Trent Williams. Well, you know, this is not Quentin Dunbar. But but Steve, there also comes a point where it's like, what if you're at the draft, you don't have a second round? What if at, but after the draft, you don't have a second round offer? What it like? Well, I mean, do you want to go into another season of, of this? Chip. So well, at some point, you take the bag of Doritos for him, but there's no reason to do it now. Yeah, I, I don't think you so, should do it now. No. So the Redskins will get a comp pick next next year's draft after they after Trent walks, right? No. no okay, That'd yeah. Like that, a... Let me explain this. 
Um, I did go back and read the CBA about this. There's a lot of confusion about the comp pick. So um, if the Redskins hang, hang on to Trent Williams through the 2020 season and then he walks, then the Redskins would be eligible for a comp pick. However, comma, um, the way the comp picks work is basically if the Redskins – if Trent goes out and signs a contract and yet the Redskins bring in a free agent that has an equivalent contract, those that loss and that gain will cancel each other out and they will not get any comp pick. Also, the new CBA has changed the rules. Wherein I'm not going to bore you with too many details, but the bottom line is uh, because Trent has a certain number of time uh, years in service, they cannot get more than a fifth round comp pick out of him. Okay. If they're eligible so, for a comp pick, it will be a fifth and, rounder. And it's in two so years, that, Jamal, not next year. It, it'll, the comp pick itself will come in 2022 if they lose okay. him next right. summer. Right. So okay. it's not so, worth it to wait. Oh, yeah. That. That, oh, yeah that, I meant, yeah, that's what I meant. But um, so that, but that's all, that's what I was getting to, that, that part that you just mentioned, Steve. It's really not worth it because why would they? So <laughs> at the very least, they'll get a fifth round. They'll get a fifth round draft pick for Trent Williams. At the very most. If, if they let. I mean, I'm sorry. At the, yeah. at the most, you'll get a fifth round draft pick once he walks. So, why the hell would the agent go on national radio and try and make these arguments to make it seem like, first and foremost, they he never answered the second round pick question. Mm -hmm. So, why on earth would the Redskins take anything uh, fifth round or or later? Why would they do any do any of that when it doesn't benefit them? They need to stand tall. Keep uh if you can get two thirds, fine. If you could get a, a second, fine. If you get a third and a player, depends on the player, you know, but it can work. Um either way, why would they why would they give in to anybody what the agent is, is talking about? Why would they even first of all, they're smart for not even entertaining this battle publicly. It's all one side right now. And it's the mm -hmm. agent trying to make up for damaged goods and, and past mistakes that he made and that Trent Williams made. Um so it's, I, I respect the Redskins for not even entertaining this publicly, but and at the same time, you can see them. They're try, they're just trying to they're doing what they can to try and put some pressure on the Redskins, and the Redskins aren't folding. They're definitely now, winning the PR battle. The, the yes. agent team, he, everything he says screams desperation and yeah, uh, yes. it's not my fault. You know, passing blame and and deflecting. It, it's pretty funny actually. Well, now Robbie, let's 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 assume that. Trent is gone one way or the other, whether it's because he retires, he holds out and loses a bunch of money, he's traded, whatever. Um, let's talk free agency. They might draft somebody. Let's hope they do. But in the meantime, I don't think they're going to go into the draft without a replacement lined up probably. So, I mean, at this point, a lot of the top guys are gone. A lot yeah. of the a lot of our readers and the chuckleheads in the comment section are drooling over Jason Peters. Um, so he's an option. Um, Donald Penn's another option. There's a couple others. So talk to us about possible all the options replacements. Like they're the, that same 37 ish. You know? I, it, I'll just tell you, Robbie. I mean, that Jason Peters scares me to death. I mean, I know he is a <laughs> Hall of Famer and all that stuff. The man is 108 years old. So talk to us a little bit about what you think about the free agent market, and we'll get to the draft later. I mean, tackle wise, there's definitely not much left. Jason Peters is the best one available, but there's a question of age and injury history you know he's he's had a lot of injuries over the years and um season ending ones at that um so yeah. I, it, that's kind of a i guess a plan z in that case because um you know it's uh it's not necessarily one you want to uh bank on for a long-term solution um the way what i do see though is the cornelius <clears throat> excuse me cornelius lucas is a is a pretty interesting signing. Um, on the on the surface, it looks like he's just a a swing tackle guy for depth. But I watched a good deal of him, and I think he's a guy that could start and definitely, at the very least, uh, compete with Morgan Moses at right tackle um, to put him on notice and make put a fire under uh, Moses's butt. Hmm. So um, I, I think I he's think a left. Gotta, Can he play on the left side? Yeah, he's played left. I, I, I like what I see from it, right tackle personally, but you know, if, if, if it comes to it, um, he could probably compete at left tackle too, but I, I liked what I saw at right. Um, I, it seems like they're also having hope that uh, Jerron Christian can come in and compete at left tackle. God help him. Cause uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. he's terrible, right? Can we just he's say awful. It? 
I've been pointing it out since he was drafted. He, he was a really bad pick and just uh, a wasted pick when you had a guy like Orlando Brown on the board and you take Jerron Christian instead. Um, so, yeah, I think we got somebody that can compete with uh, at right tackle at the very least with Cornelius Lucas. Um, but the good thing is, since the free agency uh, is not very a reliable source for offensive tackle help, we got the draft. And this is an historical uh, offensive tackle class. Like, mm. seriously, I, I've counted, I mean, I could count 10 fingers and at least five toes <laughs> of offensive tackles that I think could come in and at, at, the, uh, at the very least compete to start. Um, really? There's a lot of guys that I really like on film. Um, I mean, I can, like I said, I can list you a bunch. And we'll get to I that. Think, yeah, and I think that's where we're going to uh, be looking to address the more tackle uh, depth. Well, talk about Donald Penn. I mean, because Penn came in and by my own expert eyes, looked like he did at least a decent job last year, you know, but he's old too. Um, and I know you rank Peters number one. If they're scared off from that, is Penn still an option? I mean, I mean yeah. he's an option, but is he a good option? Penn should be an option. Yeah. I, I mean, he had his low lights. Every, I mean, everybody has their low lights and you, you've, we've all seen it. He's old. He's like 37 years old now and not as mobile as he used to be. He's he can't he's got to be more tactical in his pass sets. So, um, you know, it, it comes to bite him sometimes. But I thought overall he did a pretty decent job, all things considered, you know, taking in those factors of age and, and all that. So if it comes if worse comes to worse, we can just bring Donald Penn back for another year. And, you know, he's he's been there. He knows. He knows the guys in the locker room. He's got chemistry. Um, it, it wouldn't be a bad idea, in my opinion. Some okay. others may, sh- you know, uh, not like that idea, but <laughs> you're about you know, <laughs> I, yeah, I almost did. I saved myself. <laughs> but some may, some may not like that idea. I, I thought he was serviceable and, and he was getting the job done for the most part. I mean, th- there is the catch that this is a new coaching staff, so there's no familiar stuff right. there. You know that that uh, yeah. yeah. But I'll maybe, tell you what scares me about it. What scares me about this is if they're trapped to bring in Jason Peters or Donald Penn, um, it's a pretty important year for Dwayne Haskins. You know, it really is. This is his key, the key year of his career, in my view. He yeah. either needs to get on the path to franchise quarterback, or they're basically going to get rid of him. I think um, might not happen this year, but they're going to. It, it won't work for him. And what scares me is you got these old guys out here, and then all of a sudden you're going to have Jerron Christian or worse out there on the left side because of some, in, you know, old guy injury. That's what scares me. And that's why I really hope they draft a and replacement. That's, and that's exactly why the Redskins are trying to hold on to Trent too. I mean, they don't, I don't see that they are very keen on letting him leave. He's a hall of fame, future tackle. And, uh, you know, you need that kind of guy at your left tackle spot blocking for a young quarterback like Dwayne Haskins, who's still growing. Um, so that's also partly why I think they're, holding off for a better deal. Because if, you, if you're really going to take away our left tackle that's supposed to block for our young quarterback, then we need to be substantially compensated. The the one thing uh, I've always said is I, I think you need to still be taking this approach of getting one of these old veteran guys and, you know, uh, drafting somebody somewhere. Uh, because even if there are 15 good tackles, there's no guarantee that even the top guy you draft is going to be ready, you know, coming right out of college week one. You need That's to right. have a uh, couple plans at left tackle, I feel like, going into the – not to mention we don't know what kind of trade options we're going to have or anything like that yet. So, you know, there's a lot of catches there. Yeah. I mean, of course, the other O-line thing is, Wes, is uh, you know, they have brought in a guard. Wes Didn't bring in two guards? Or just one? Yeah. Well, we talked about two. Lucas. Yeah, I mean, Robbie talked about Lucas already. Yeah. Wes Schweitzer, if you look at his contract, the money part of me says, here, boom, here's our starter with what they're paying him. So, they're, you know, over. I'm just telling you from a money perspective, I know, that's I know. my – Yeah. And I was going to say, compared to who? <laughs> compared to Wes Martin would be, you know, the other one. Yeah, that, and, and that's what I was saying, like, contractually, that's all. That's what yeah, I was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So talk to, us about, talk to us about Schweitzer and what you see in it and what you see generally in the left guard position. Uh, I think it's easily Wes Martin's job to lose. I've watched a little bit of Wes Schweitzer. He's he's twitched up, like he plays with some juice and, and all that, but 
He's just not overly powerful. Um, I think he's a he would be a solid depth guy. He's an upgrade over Tony Bergstrom um, in, in that regard. So in that you know, adding to the O line depth is is important. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people are kind of down on our free agency so far, but a big need was depth besides just impact players. We needed depth. So um, if Schweitzer doesn't beat out West Martin, then great. He's a good backup. Same thing for if he beats West Martin for the job. West Martin is, I mean, solid depth. I mean, I have no problem with uh, bringing guys in like that. It could have been, I mean, it could have been some better guys that are maybe a little more expensive, but like we've like the we've seen with this whole free agency, it's pretty much bargain bin shopping, hoping to get uh, guys that overachieve on a cheap deal. Right, right. A lot of veterans, older. Surpri- surprisingly, it feels like there's a lot of guys who are coming in who are a little older than you thought they'd bring in too. Um, True. You know, <laughs> but I guess that that's how it's just kind of rolled. Well, the, the other guy, obviously, O line. Then we're going to move on to another position group. But you know, they've got Brandon Scherf at a minimum on the franchise tag. Now, I think I'm ecstatic about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and I know yeah. he had a down year, but your thoughts by his on standards. <laughs> by his standards, right? So your thoughts on Scherf? <laughs> Uh, he's he's a star, you know he he is the part of that offensive line at this point. No Trent Williams, he's the next best guy, and you know the he's the leader on that group. So um, keeping him was very important. He had a down year, like we all said, but um, a down year from him is still a lot better than most guards out there. Um, I know the tag is a very expensive, all things considered. But yeah. if we once we get that deal worked out, which it seems like they will eventually. Um, that'll go down and, and we'll have him for, you know, hopefully for the rest of his career. So I, I'm excited about having him be part of this, the Redskins future going forward. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Alex, did I cut you off? I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no. Uh, um, okay. Well, let, let's, and we're, we need to move on because we want to get to the draft here, but real quick, um, you know, they've obviously had a bunch of other signings here. Um, what interests me most, I think, right now are all these running backs. They, they've, like, signed all the running backs, you know, at this point, it seems like. Uh, you know, like every running back on the face of the earth is under contract right now. But it seems to me that you got J.D. McKissick probably as Mr. Chris, as, as Mr. Chris Thompson. Right. Mm-hmm. And then Peyton Barber, uh, talented guy. I guess he's here to compete. Um, am I right about McKissick? And then what is Peyton Barber's role, if any? Or is he going to get cut? Uh, that's that's a good question. Um, I'm I'm actually surprised at the how cheap a contract Peyton Barber was. You know, he's he's been a pretty solid running back for the Bucks over these past couple seasons, and mm-hmm. um, so I, I'm not sure how that situation is going to shake out. I mean, I mean, when you look at it on paper, you got Adrian Peterson. That's you know he ain't getting any younger, but he's been very solid. He hasn't been injured too much. If he is injured, he fights through it and plays anyway, and still does really well. Um, and then you got Darius Geis, who's, you know, we don't know what we got in him. He shows a ton of flashes, but then he gets hurt. And, right. you know, that's not his fault. Some, most of it's been freak stuff, but it, it is what it is. And then you got Bryce Love, who was a you know Heisman winner and um, showed a lot of stuff in college. But um, we don't know what he, we have in him either because he's coming back from a pretty serious injury. So I, I get bringing in competition and, and more depth, but – it will be interesting to see how that shakes out. But, yeah, J.D. McKissick is going to be Chris Thompson 2.0 for us. And really, I, I mean, this may be a hot take, but he seems to be more a true receiving threat than Thompson was. Thompson was a good back, uh, or blocking back, as small as he was. But McKissick has some juice to him and, and can really catch. You look at it, he lines up at wide receiver, makes wide receiver plays. I mean, he was a former receiver. So that helps a lot. I, I, I like the McKissick signing a lot. I think he's going to be uh, a big surprise with this new offense. It was kind of sad to see Chris Thompson obviously know that his replacement was in, and he uh, clearly was kind of bummed in the yeah. you know the stuff he put out. It's kind of sad to see. And, and Thompson gave what did he say? Off. I missed it. Oh, he just said, you know, I see what happens, and I'm not ready to talk about it you know, yet basically. Oh, okay. And he never said anything else. It was obvious that he knew and he was sad to, sad to see it, see it happen. And, you yeah. know, he didn't want to talk about it. You well, know? he, he did say again at the end of the season that he knew this was probably his last year. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. You're 29 yeah, year old, oft injured running back. It, it's, and that's, 
I was gonna say, and that's uh, it's. I mean, it's fair. Like he sees it. He sees it pretty clearly. Um, and and the thing that sucks. Uh, I agree with Rob. Like that, McKissick is a really is a really good sign in. Uh, for what the Redskins need in that backfield, um, but for a guy in Chris Thompson, you know, and I, I kind of said it this week. It, it's it's rough to say verbally because I I only typed it, I, tw- I tweeted it, but to say verbally, like uh, the perception that we have in Chris Thompson is that we we kind of know that he's just a good guy, um, and he's not drama filled. He's not a person who does anything but puts his best forward on mm-hmm. the field and wants to do good for the fans and for the team. Um, but in perspective, 2017 was the only good season he had. Um, yeah. He's been here for five years or however long it's been, five, six years, and it's been riddled with injuries. Um, again, like like we know with injuries, everything's not always their fault. We don't know what type of health they're doing. and We don't know what type of work they're doing to keep their body up right. to par. But we just know, like, everything, every injury is not their fault. These are freak injuries. I know the one in 2017, he's simply blocking for his quarterback, and he breaks his he breaks his uh, leg. Um, and just in general, like, the things that he's been through, uh, it's, it's, we're not, we're missing something, but we're not missing a lot because we rarely see him on the field. Mm-hmm. Um, you can move past Chris Thompson when we're talking about football. You can move past Chris Thompson, uh, but it is unfortunate given that, you know he was so well liked by the fans, but he, we just we just didn't see enough of him. Yeah, he was a good story. I mean, he had you know his brother got out of prison, saw him play football for the first time. It's you know good guy. Um, and we I do need to get to the draft. What's that? I said we seen him grow up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so really, we do need we need to get his draft. So real quick, Kyle Allen trade. Your thoughts, Robbie? Yeah, I, I didn't like the compensation at first. Um, fifth round pick for for him was kind of like eh, he could have just been cut anyway and then we signed him but when you think about it yeah he knows scott turner's system he knows ron rivera he's 24 years old he's shown some flashes as a quarterback and it could probably um start if need be it's, so I, it makes sense fifth round pick for a, a, a cheap quarterback on a rookie deal you know, it, it, I get it. It makes sense, and I can live with it. And we got the fifth round pick back for trading Quentin Dunbar. So, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, it's comp- good competition for Haskins. It's not someone that you know he has to look behind his shoulder every rep, for, in, in my opinion, for. So, um, you know, good healthy competition. I, I, I will say it is kind of a annoying just because you're trading for a guy who's got one year left on his deal. So, mm. you know that, you know that's odd to me. And you you can kind of think of it this way: you, a fifth rounder is a backup quarterback, but it's also the value for what is a starting corner in this league. That that's kind of crazy when you think of that part. Uh, I uh, thought Robbie yeah. would be more bummed though, because I, I would have assumed that he would have been hoping for Heineke to come in now. As a <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, I I guess I could have thought of that. He was with the Panthers. That's yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, I'm surprised that he didn't get more. Like I, I guess it's because Jordan Tamu was the younger, more promising talent, but sure. he should have been starting in that XFL team, in my opinion. <laughs> if for those who don't aren't aware, t- Taylor Haneke, it was Robbie's old quarterback. Yeah, at college. ODU. That's, yeah, right mm. at ODU. Um, I know y'all played together. Yep. Um, in terms of Kyle Allen, I, I think with for for the trade, you got to th- think about that the value of the contract going out and coming in. Uh, matters when it comes to trade compensation, okay? So when a, a team takes a high-dollar contract off of a team's hand, that is worth value. In, sure. in the contrast here, the Panthers are giving the Redskins a quarterback who started 12 games and did pretty decent for an undrafted free agent at a contract that's a min-value contract. And so that factors into the compensation. So, like, all things being considered, yeah, I'd probably rate him maybe a six-round pick, not a fifth-round pick maybe, but the contract matters. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I think I that's think why the co- the compensation gets up to um, fifth Hold round. In the, yeah. Question. Um he got. He was a. He was a. He was an exclusive rights free agent. So he was. On, he was yes. only signed to a one year deal. Right. Correct. Yes, that's right. Okay. All right. Okay. I, I was just making sure because I, I was hearing rookie contract. I'm like, am I? Are we talking about Haskins or are we talking about? Uh, no, no. Sorry. I, I meant what I when I meant by that was 
uh, comparable you know, to yeah. right. rookie contract in that late okay. draft. Yeah, yeah he's that's only making six fifty or something, right? So yeah, six seventy five, I believe yeah. it is. Um, I'm following now. We good. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, you know, I think it's pretty um, insightful that of all the Carolina quarterbacks, that's the one they got. You know, you know, Rivera didn't want Cam. You know, I think that would have been a disaster in terms of Dwayne Haskins' development. Mm-hmm. No, you bring in the guy who was a pretty competent quarterback. Not great. You know, the dude won Joe Montana, but he did pretty well. Uh, and he knows Scott Turner's offense. If if they have to – if the NFL does not get any practice time at all because of this quarantine stuff that's going on, Scott Allen, uh, Kyle Allen can come in and just play from day one in this offense. And so I think that's a big benefit. And you don't have the drama – and the chaos that is Cam Newton coming in. I think that'd or be James Winston. Right. Yeah. James Winston's a knucklehead on top of that. So I don't want to. Oh, oh, relax, it. man. He is a, he's a knucklehead, man. Is he not a knucklehead? He's a knucklehead. I don't think he is, man. He, you know, he, he mind his business. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're talking about stealing crab legs and, and you know, feeling up Uber leaders. drivers. Yeah. I mean, I, that's his business. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I, I stole, I stole crab legs before when I was in college. <laughs> You're not a I'm just star playing. quarterback. I'm just, I'm just playing. I ain't still don't grab this, but you get the point. We all did stupid things. Well, so, I usually helped people get out of those stupid things. <laughs> um, See, look, you serve a purpose. <laughs> I appreciate you. <laughs> Should we move to the draft? Yes. We've, we've yeah. babbled on long enough. Talk some O-line in the draft. We've got 20 minutes left. Uh, and Jamal, I know you said you have to go shortly, but, you know, until you do. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Okay, so... First, first question, Robbie is: Is it Chase Young or bust it too? I, I think the plan is, I think they want to try a trade back first. Um, I think they're looking to get the best deal they can if they can trade back. Um, and I think tra- Chase Young is the plan B. You know, if they can't get the deal they want, if they can't get Miami's three first round picks and whatever, then I mean. You can't go wrong with Chase Young as a plan B. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's a hell of a plan B. And, you know, either way, it uh, really helps the team in the grand scheme of things. Yes, Chase Young isn't necessarily, not necessarily a need because we got, we got pass rushers. We weren't terrible at rushing the passer last year. But, you know, you can't pass on an elite guy like that when you have the chance at him. You know, you look at the, I mean, it's, the impact a guy like uh, Nick Bosa had for the 49ers. Mm-hmm. They were already stout and very talented up front, and they still took Nick Bosa in any way and didn't trade down. And, I mean, he was a very big reason why they made it to the Super Bowl. And, you know, I, I'm not saying we're going to be in the Super Bowl next year, but he has Chase Young's going to have that same kind of impact, in my opinion. So, you know, you can't go wrong with that as a plan B. But, you know, I would be... I would be cool with trading back as well. You know, I think it's a lot of people seem to be it's either or you can't have, you can't like both options. You know, it's Chase Young, no matter, no matter what, or trade back, no matter what. I, I think it, you, you have to have all options on the table. And if one doesn't present itself, then you take the other. I, I, Robbie, I get yelled at electronically on almost a daily basis <laughs> for daring to suggest that perhaps trade back is a better option, and I get screamed at all the time well, regularly about it. Because you're willing to trade back for a first and a third, Steve. That's the problem. <laughs> what I have said is I think they need to trade back. They need to basically take the best reasonable offer they can you know, and trade. That's my that's my. I, I just plan. see if you're trading up to get your franchise quarterback, you need to pay the price for it. You, know, it, you can't just give up chump change for your uh, – Potential Tua. franchise quarterback. Yeah. yeah, if you want Tua, if you want Burrow, you want Herbert, you got to come get him. You got to pay the price. You know? But I never said, don't let Alex fool you. I never said a first and a third. What I've said is, if you add up the numbers on the draft chart, I take something that's roughly equals twenty six hundred points, and that is a, a first, a second, and another pick, yeah, another decent pick. That's what the trade value chart says. But forget all that, because you're our line guy. And there's a lot of controversy. Controversy is the wrong word. There's a lot of difference of opinion about how these top ranked O line guys are, are ranked. You know, is is Andrew Thomas the best? Is Tristan worse? I mean, some guys love Mackay Becton based on what he did at the four at the combine. So talk to us about the O line class generally and, and who's who's the top guy? Who should the Redskins be shooting for? Well, if they did trade back, the guy I would love to have is Mackay Becton. Um, you know, I'm, I didn't fall in love with him because of the combine, 
I fell in love with him more because of the combine. I loved what I saw of him on tape. And his size is very exciting. And then the, the fact that he can move that way as big as he is makes it even better. Um, I, he would be my top guy. He may not be – he has the higher ceiling – uh, than some of these other guys, Tristan Wirfs and, and Jedrick Wills and Andrew Thomas right now are better players, in my opinion. But you're, I project that Becton will be better than all of them once he reaches his peak. Um, what are you saying is his weak spot then? Is it the just lack of fundamentals kind of thing? He's, yeah, he's, he's more raw technique-wise than some of these other guys. Like Jedrick Wills is perfection in technique. Uh, he, I have never saw him lose a pass rush or a, a rep in pass blocking um, from what I saw. He handled some of the top pass rushers in this draft. Uh, the LSU guy, he, I mean, he dogged him all game. Uh, he is automatic as a pass protector, and he, he's solid in the run game too. So, I mean, you're getting a guy with a very high floor with Wills, <coughs> but with Becton, you got a guy that's, you know, I, I think the, the sky's the limit for a guy like Becton. He, he's a... A guy that can change your the the uh, attitude and you know set the tone on your offensive line, kind of like what Brandon Sheriff was uh, for us when he came in. You know, he was a mauler and a mm-hmm. tone setter and a and a bully. Um, that's exactly what Becton is. I mean, if you watch his film, it's probably the most fun I've had watching offensive lineman's film in a long time. He he, he just tosses guys around. He's like the mountain from Game of Thrones out there. <laughs> I mean, that that reminds me a lot Damn, of. Damn, I miss uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> it does remind me a lot of Trent when he came out too though. Trent was a freak athlete uh mm. who was just a giant who could move and you know strong at the same time. The more comparable person to Trent though, athletically at least is is Tristan Wirfs. And uh you know, I, I'm of the opinion I, I know after he tested so well, people were like he should stay at tackle, but you know, when I look at what he can do um athletically and Watching him on tape, I thought he looked like a guard playing tackle out there to me, and and uh, you know I think he'd project he'd play even better at guard. Um, and people are like, well, you don't waste that much athletic ability at guard. Why not? Guards mm-hmm. pull all the time. They lead out on screen blocks all the time. You need athletic guards for that type of stuff. And guards are people too. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. I mean, and and you look at, I mean, arguably the more in. Uh, disrupting pass rushers are in the interior now. I mean, you yeah. got Aaron Donald, you got, I mean, tons of elite uh, pass rushing uh, interior linemen, and you got to counter that. Um, so, I, you know, I, it's a very solid class overall, though. I mean, you got, like I said earlier, uh, double-digit guys that can start or at least come in and compete to start that in this class. And I think, you know, if we, if we didn't get a trade back and had to take Chase Young at two, there's easily going to be a guy in the third or fourth or even the fifth round that we could uh, be happy about getting that late. Well, since you brought it up, uh, it was actually going to be my next question anyway. Who are some guys that you think will be there in the third that the Redskins should be looking at? Because I'm assuming if we go young, then left tackle or a tackle is priority number one in that 3-2 spot. Yeah, I would say left tackle would probably be one. And I mean, another position that they're going to be looking to get I would say is another receiver. I mean, they've tipped sure. their hand. Redskins have with trying to, you know, swinging big for Amari Cooper and missing that. That and Austin awesome Hooper and Austin awesome yeah. Hooper too. That's yeah. that was surprising. I mean, I thought I saw all the reports saying that they weren't even in on him. They didn't even try. And then then Austin Hooper says it was between him uh, or Redskins and, and Cleveland Browns. So yeah. that was a weird weird thing to wake up to this morning. Um, but yeah, someone late that I like. I mean, there's a lot, but um, Sadiq Charles is probably my favorite. He plays left tackle for LSU. Um, there's some character concerns with him and some inconsistencies as a left tackle, but um, I, I really liked what I saw from him and think he's a. I think a lot of the people you read the media people and how they cover the draft and all. I think they're lower on Sadiq Charles than I am. I think he's a guy that can start right away and. Um, and be a really good tackle. He's a- very athletic. Um, so, yeah, I, that's probably my favorite one. But there, like I said, there's others. There's Matt Pert. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, Ezra Cleveland is an interesting option. He tested really well at the Combine. 
Um, who else? Alex Taylor. That's an interesting one too. He's the six nines or six eight six nine guy from a lower, smaller school, but he's <laughs> from what I see on film, pretty solid in tackle, and he's got all these intangibles that you really like. I mean, crazy long arms, mm-hmm. uh, very tall. I mean, it's really hard to get past that kind of guy with that long arms and that much length that has good technique. So that would be an interesting option as well. Late. Um, you haven't mentioned Andrew Thomas at all. You know, originally when you go on into the kind of the pre-draft process, Andrew Thomas was by some ranked as the top tackle tackle in the draft. And I noticed that there's among O-line experts, which is definitely not me, that he's got a vast difference of opinion. You know, here a lot of people don't like him. So what's the deal with Andrew Thomas? I don't think there's any deal with him per se. I mean, he's just, in my opinion, he's just not as good as guys like Wills or, um, or projects as high as Beckton does for me. But he still would be a top, a solid option. I don't, I don't hate him. Uh, so, uh, but Beckton, you know, I, and some people even think he's maybe even a third round talent. You know, I know there's a vast, yeah, I've seen that, and it's by some. And, Early and on, I, I, he was lower rated. By so, I mean, is back to a first round pick? I mean, I know he's your top guy, but you also said, you know, that technique wise, he's not quite as ready now. You know, so is he a first round pick, or is this a guy we can, you know, they can get maybe in the second or third round and then, you know, let him sit for a year behind Donald Penn or Jason Peters or somebody and get to better or what? No, Penn, or, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Beckton is going to be. I mean, I feel pretty confident in saying that he'll be a giant come so uh, first round. At first the end rounder, of then he's going to go fourth overall to the Giants. I think Dave okay. Gettleman is drooling at the idea of drafting a guy as big as athletic as as uh, Mackay Becton, um, and I'll hate to see that because I think Becton's going to be pretty good. Well, that kind um, of hurts uh, his, his uh, rating overall in my mind because. You know, they just screw it up all the time when they draft the line. <laughs> the fact that the Giants yeah. like him. Yeah. I trust yeah, the yeah, true. more than I do Dave Gettleman. <laughs> that's true. I mean, Gettleman is he's not the greatest GM in the world, and he's kind of a I know more than you do type uh, know it all, uh, right. arrogant kind of attitude. But, um, you know, I, that would be a smart pick for them, in my opinion, because, uh, you know, you get a guy that is good but can be even better. Um, in that regard, and it'd be a good, especially if, if especially if we take if the Redskins take Chase Young at two. That's the, it's a big need, and it's the kind of the a chess move at the same time. You know, the, uh, reaction pick as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, crap, they got Chase Young. I need to get another really good offensive lineman type thing. Mm-hmm. But so Sadiq Charles round three, the uh, same place. I think he'd be there in the fourth. Fourth. He's, yeah, I, I think he's, you know, with you add in the character concerns that has been brought up with him, um, plus his, you know, his inconsistencies, he shows flashes of, of, you know, really good offensive line play, and then he gets beat pretty bad on another. So I, you add all that up together, I think he could be, he'll be there in the fourth round, I think, and that would be a solid, really solid pick, in my opinion. What, what are your guard What's your guard list? You know, the Redskins could draft a guard, too. I mean... The interior... Could... The interior is not nearly as good. Uh, I thought last year's class for interior offensive line was really good. Um, and then this one's not close to that either. You got some solid options, though. There's Cesar Ruiz, who's, who's a good uh, center. And then you got Lloyd Cushenberry, the center from LSU, who's, who's very good. I like him a lot. He's mm-hmm. powerful and He's he's a, uh, a bully as well, and then you got Damian Lewis, plays right guard, also from LSU. Um, I mean, th- then if you take into account some tackles that could slide inside, it, the class gets better. Like if you consider Tristan Wirfs a, a guard, then you know that's a very solid guard option. Um, <clears throat> then there's other uh, guys you could consider moving inside, but um, overall, if you look at it on paper, just listed as guards and centers, it's not the greatest. So. Um, if you really think that's a need, you'd have to get one early. Well, I, I, I'll be honest. I don't think interior is going to be a big need for the Redskins, given that we've signed a couple guys. We yeah. drafted Pierce Bacher and Martin last year, so they got a couple depth guys on rookie deals already. Uh, right. It, it feels like we're in a very good spot at center, and at least in guard, we got a lot of competition for one spot. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the depth we have on the interior. I mean, losing Flowers definitely hurt. But um, 
I liked Martin going into the week one as the mm-hmm. starter as well, as a potential starter. I thought he played pretty well in preseason and showed a lot of good things, and he showed good things when he played in the season this last year. So yeah. you know, I, I'm not I'm not concerned with that, and Schweitzer as a backup is good. You know, he, he's versatile, and I think he's played center a couple times. Uh, so, you know, you got your next Bergstrom in that regard. So, um, interior is looking all right. It's the tackles that uh, that needs to be addressed really, uh, desperately. Fixed. Yeah. yeah. Are you as high on Isaiah Simmons as I am? You know, what I see in Isaiah Simmons is a dude who's got a profile, athletic profile that's just off the charts. Mm-hmm. You know, and any mistakes he makes from a reading the field, you know, perspective, <laughs> he can make up for it because he's got so much quickness and ability. Uh, so, what do you? Am I right? Am I wrong? What? No, you, you are. I, I, I'm totally with you on Isaiah Simmons. I, I love Isaiah Simmons. Um, you could argue that he's the better, the bigger need than Chase Young. I've argued it um, for months and been laughed at every day of every day of my life for it. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and it's just a solid case. I mean, we need speed. This defense needs speed, especially at linebacker. We don't have speed at linebacker. Um, we don't have guys at linebacker that can cover tight ends. We don't have guys at linebacker that could play nickel if we needed to. <laughs> so, um, you know, if if it, if it comes to it that we get a trade back and Isaiah Simmons is on the board, I'm going to be very excited. I mean, I'll still be a little disappointed that we didn't get Chase Young. But because, you know, pass rush makes defenses better. I mean, you, you have a solid pass rush. That's my baby. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> he doesn't agree with you. I don't know. Isaiah Simmons, she, apparently, or she doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she, she has her uh, <laughs> she has her, her uh, concerns. Yeah. Put a head, put some headphones on her. See what she says. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, I mean, yes, I'd be, I'd be disappointed if we did pass up on some or our chase young, because like I was saying, uh, a, an elite pass rush makes everybody on defense better. It makes your corners and safeties better. You know, it, it you improve the defense by that, but you also, have a uh, really interesting option with Isaiah Simmons where you can play him literally anywhere you want, except maybe defensive tackle. I mean, he's played edge before. He's played linebacker. He's played safety. He's played single high safety as the as the center fielder. He's played nickel. He's, I mean, you can I do was anything. I shocked watching his film, watching that guy play nickel corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, I blind up there in the corner. Unbelievable. Um, and, and I'll see what was it, Rob Henson or Mark Tyler, one of the two of them, was really touting Kevin Pierre Lewis as kind of a sneaky good uh, linebacker signing, you know. And I guess where I'm going with this is, is if that's the case, was it Henson? As if that's the case, maybe the need for linebacker isn't quite as much as it was two weeks ago. You know, have you watched Pierre Lewis yet? I haven't watched him at all. Personally. I, did, I did watch. I did do some research on Pierre Lewis, and when he came in, I think later in the season as a starter because of injuries. Um, and he was playing solid football. Like he was, he seemed very instinctual. He was um, making plays, chasing guys down sideline to sideline type thing. Uh, this it could be a sneaky signing um, guy with some good character. I think he has a military background as well. Um, he's from, uh, from Haiti, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. He's a, there's a uh, really good spot I saw of him on YouTube, like a character preview or character show spotlight from the Bears uh, media team doing a little interview with him. And he seems like a very high character guy, fits the uh, character um, that Ron Rivera is preaching. I could see it. I think he'd be a solid outside linebacker in the 4-3 and... And, you know, bringing, talking more about the linebackers, I think Thomas Davis is going to start for us. I think he's going to be the mic. He's going to be the guy calling the shots and getting guys in position. And then uh, the other outside linebacker spot is going to be the – have the – well, I'll say both outside linebacker spots has, has the serious competition because um, if Ruben Foster is healthy, then you have a really solid uh, guy that can compete to start there. Will Compton did a lot of good things um, as a rookie last year. Um, Compton? They, Cole Holcomb. Did I, say Will Compton? Yeah. I meant Cole Holcomb. Cole Holcomb. I mean, it's easily mixed up <laughs> between the two. I'm right? sorry, Cole. I didn't mean. I didn't mean to slight you that way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the linebacker room right now is very crowded. 
So I can see why they wouldn't take Isaiah Simmons per se, right. but you're taking Isaiah Simmons. It's not just as a linebacker, you know, it, it's as a defensive weapon and a guy that's going to move all over the place. So um, where does Bostic fit into this? If, if Davis is your Mike, where does Bostic fit in? I think, I think Bostic's going to start off as one of the starters. Like it's going to probably, if I had to guess what the lineup would be initially, like going into uh, the first practice of training camp, I'd say it's Thomas Davis at Mike Bostic at one of the outside linebacker spots and uh, Cole Holcomb at the other. Not and Foster? Then, if I, Foster, I don't know if he's healthy or not yet. I, he just recently gained regained feeling in yeah. one of his legs. Yeah. So uh, I, I can't count him in there yet. But if he is healthy, then, you know, maybe he, he would be there. Uh, it, then it would be Foster, Bostic, and, and Davis. But um, <clears throat> it's crowded. I think we got some good depth. I mean, Sh- Sean Dion Hamilton um, does pretty well when he comes in and – when he's healthy and good to go, I think he's a solid option as well. We've got some interesting depth there at linebacker now. Um, mm-hmm. So I wouldn't, I, outside of Isaiah Simmons, I don't think we're going to draft a linebacker at this point. Hey, Robbie, random question. Uh, they signed Logan Thomas. Didn't you, would you have played against him when he was at Tech and you were still playing? No? I, I didn't know if I you didn't. guys played them. I graduated before OU played Tech, unfortunately. Okay. okay. I, I didn't play that game. By the way, guys, I mean, Say hello to your starter, your starter at tight end, Logan Thomas. Yeah. I, I mean, he's, I'm serious. I mean, you got to look at the money of this thing. He's the one that's got the guaranteed money. Yep. You know, Richard Rogers got no guaranteed money. He got a million dollar deal. Uh, Thomas got a $6.1 million deal over two years. Uh, he got a uh, 2.25 million signing bonus. I mean, he, there's your starter. I, I mean, they, clearly they seem to think that they can get more out of these guys than than what they've gotten so far. Sure. Richard Rodgers yeah. had, had some good moments with Green Bay, but I mean, he hasn't. I don't remember. I forgot he was even in the NFL until me they too. signed him. Yeah, me too. Well, I, was I like, think oh, he was Richard the Rogers. third stringer for him, right? I mean, for Green Bay. For Green Bay, he was the starter. Oh, was he, he? he was. He, he caught the Hail Mary touchdown. And, oh. Yeah, he started for for Green Bay, and then then he was with Philly. I think was it Philly. You guys want to know? I did the write up on him. Hold on, <laughs> keep talking. I'll well, look it up. anyway, he, he's he was hurt the past two years. Didn't mm-hmm. play. I don't believe. So I think he's just a a, a piece to the puzzle, a role player. Um, I think a guy that we're, I think that they may find as a uh, a sleeper, so per se, is Hale Henches. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he came in as a uh, practice squad guy. We signed off the Colts roster and. And did some really good things. Uh, he's he's not a burner. He's not a, res- a true receiving threat, but um, he's a guy that can make solid catches and, and uh, you know get you some tough yards after he catches it. And, and he's a tough blocker. Uh, I was I'm working on a supercut of all his blocking from uh, Game Pass to kind of let people interpret what you know make their own interpretations of his blocking sure. on their own. But overall. I mean, in line blocking against the 49ers, he was going up against Eric Armstead one on one and held his own. He's he's a guy that that gives you maximum maximum effort as a blocker and can be decent as a receiving threat if you give him a chance. You know, you know, play action uh, or you know, just just general tight end routes. I think he's a guy that could be a solid option as well. But Logan Thomas, I think you're right, Steve will be. On paper, the starter until somebody Campbell. beats him out. Yeah, it, yeah it'll be him out, starting. Out, I'm out. guessing we'll draft somebody. I, I, I mean, we've gone over yeah. tight ends in the draft on other shows. There's some guys in here who I think will be fun sleepers, but they're mm-hmm. all going to be day three picks. There's a bunch of guys whose names that I can't pronounce um, yeah. at tight end. <laughs> um, um, I don't think I've ever heard you opine la- as to Dwayne Haskins' year last year, Robbie. Uh, up and down year. So what what's what was your thought after looking back on it? I think I think we saw a guy that got better each game, personally. Um he was he shouldn't have played that Giants game, the first Giants game. Mm-hmm. You know, that he was thrown into the Wolves, the Lions den there. Um but once he was officially named a starter, I thought each game he got better and better until he got hurt. Um, you know, like like Ron's pointed out, I mean he he gutted out that Lions win. Um, yeah, he shows some grit. He shows some 
uh, some toughness and um, I think he just got to fix the accuracy and get that more confident um, in the pocket. I, I think he has a tendency of kind of panicking a little bit and, 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 uh, and that affects his throws or it gets him sacked. Um, once he gets more confident, I think he's the sky's the limit. He's got the arm to make every throw we need him to. Um, yeah. We've seen it. And um, you get him another option at receiver opposite of Terry McLaurin. Um, I like what we have. I like Kelvin Harmon. I think he's solid guy. Could start if need be, but we could use some more, some more uh, explosion. You know, ex- a more explosive guy um, to counter Terry. In another speed guy is what Terry, you're saying. Yeah, like if we had another guy that could be a true number one style receiver with some speed to him. Um, you know, like if we could get, say, we traded back and got Henry Ruggs, that'd be, I mean, oh my, oh my gosh, sure. Yeah. I mean, who? That would be incredible. You know, Terry McLaurin with Henry Ruggs on the other side. That, I mean, that's, that's some serious really speed exciting. right there. <laughs> yeah, that's really exciting is for an offense. But um, if we didn't address receiver until later, I mean, it is a very deep wide receiver class as well. Then that'd be fine too because I, I do like the guys we have in the room right now mm-hmm. that receiver. They they play their role and and they do a good job at it. They're tough young players. I mean, in terms of Dwayne, um, I think the one area he really need can needs to improve on is his footwork in the face of a pass rush. Because what I notice about him is is you called it a panic, and maybe that's it. Uh, when when he starts a move, when he feels a pass rush, his footwork it's just crazy out of whack, and that makes his passes go all over the place. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think when you give him when you give him time, and he gets his keeps his footwork in order, that's when you see the good Dwayne Haskins. And but it's that other part of it that I think he needs work on. Um, so I you know I, I think if you just give him time in another year, I think that'll ought to get better. If you ask me. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see how he progresses. Guys, we are well over an hour at this point, so I think it's time to wrap up the show. Um, Robbie, thank you for joining us. Uh, as uh, we haven't seen you in a while, uh, yeah, although you and I ran into each other last training camp, which was nice. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll see. I haven't talked bo- uh, ball like this in a while, so. <laughs> So Feeling forgive a us rusty? for going a little bit longer, but <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was fun. I listen, people, it. what else do people have to do but sit around and listen to you know babble about the Redskins? Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Folks, thank you for listening. Hope you and your family are all staying safe, and uh, have a great night.